Hey everyone, welcome back to another beautiful episode of the Post Post Podcast. This is episode 114. With me as always is my co-host Chris Ronan, who vocally is uh, not 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 there right now. Not not 100. percent you, You'll hear him in like two seconds, maybe. I don't know if he'll gonna say anything. Probably not. It's gonna be a Jay and Silent Bob episode, I think. <laughs> this is no good. <laughs> so, uh, if, if you could quickly do it, how how uh, how did this voice? come to be i may or may not have gone to game five of the bruins game the other night whoa yeah and uh it was not great when they lost in overtime matthew chuck scored a pretty nice goal on a pretty empty net yep it was uh hallmark didn't seem to want to stay there but nope. we can get into that later on um mm-hmm. uh, but yeah just a lot of hooting and hollering and uh now i sound like this so <laughs> that's what that gets you well at least you're not sick it's it's a uh yeah it's, it's uh excitement yeah it of. just uh doesn't sound great for the listeners' ears, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's gonna be like hard hearing too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, edit this later on. Be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, I know. I'm gonna put my clothes. voice is like kind of fading in and out. Like some words I say just disappear. Just disappear. <laughs> I'll have to put closed captions for everyone. Yeah, on the, we'll need that on the on it. But um, let's uh, just like last week, let's get right into it. I feel like I uh, there's really not much else to talk about besides playoff hockey this. Uh, this week especially. Yeah, you pick the series and drive the bus, and I'm along for the ride, buddy. Yep. I'm going to need the – yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about it later on. But I'm going to do the same thing we did last week. Uh, I like what we did. We went series to series to series. And we are recording Friday, April 28th. Um, this this night, this night in general, there were four games. All of them could uh, end the series, and we're in the middle of watching a few. Um, as of tonight, the Panthers forced a game seven. Uh, we'll be talking about the Carolina Hurricanes and Islanders situation that just happened tonight. Uh, and then we have two games that's still going on. Actually, ironically, both of them are 3-1. to one. One's Colorado Avalanche is up 3-1 to one versus the Kraken, and the Stars are up 3-1 uh, to one against the Wilds. And both, uh, both, both series can go uh, either Seattle or Dallas's way tonight, so... I don't know. I will. We'll definitely have these uh, these scores on standby, and we'll definitely hope. Hopefully, maybe by the end of this episode, actually have some solid, you know, uh, and a solid idea of what round two is going to look like. Maybe. But yeah, we might have another series clincher here. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with the East this time, and we're going to jump right into the Boston Bruins versus the uh, Florida Panthers here. Uh, Florida Panthers tonight just forced a game seven. And the Boston Bruins did not look fucking good at all. I feel like they haven't looked good the majority of this series whatsoever. Linus Allmark, for sure, has not looked well at all. And it really fucking showed this game like we were watching. I was like, holy shit. The worst part to me of this whole situation is this is like the first game where the Bruins really popped off offensively, but they couldn't get the puck out of their own zone. They were hemmed in. Yep. I feel like the Florida Panthers four check was just kind of all over them all night long. Um, they're really not responding to the Panthers' physical play in the right way. Yeah. I think at a certain point, there has there has to have been a fight by now, and there really hasn't been. Like yeah, Trent yeah. Frederick, I think he's probably being told not to because it can swing momentum when they're up in the series. Mm-hmm. But I think at at like one point at any time, you need to send him after them, and that will send a message. Yeah, I feel like in Game Seven now, it's definitely too late to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Right? No, yeah, yeah, you're 100. Yeah, percent Throughout this entire game, like defensively, they were just terrible and like they were just making these awful awful passes in their own end that would just like lead to turnovers that's what happened to like a majority of these goals they had like two goals like they finally went up like uh five four i think at one point and then like in like two minutes like they florida panthers came right back with like two goals the same thing in game five too two terrible turnovers lead to them losing in overtime it was Mm -hmm. just like they're giving the game away in their own end yeah and uh, for Bruins fans, it's not. This is almost like a Toronto Maple Leaf situation. Just like you're gonna you're gonna make you're gonna break some records here in the re- regular season. And just fucking shit the bed first round. To, I feel like more of a Tampa Bay season. Lightning situation, 2019. Yeah, that too. But uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good, especially where they were up, I believe, three to one in the series, right? Yeah. And they let the Panthers come all the way back. All so. the way back. Yep. So uh, I guess we'll wait and see. They're yeah. at home. I'm hoping that they get it done. Um, yeah. I just feel like. 
you know, this is something that should have been wrapped up in five games, in my opinion, at the most. Yeah. And now the guys that are battling injury and battling adversity here have to continue to play in a game seven in a tight situation where they're still going to have to lay their body on the line, blocking shots, playing physical in order to get the job done with right. no rest leading into the next series. So it right. uh, could kind of spell disaster for this team. Mm. Florida Pan I'm not going to take anything away from the Florida Panthers. I know Florida Panthers kind of just snuck into the playoffs here, but they're a great team overall. But if the Bruins are having a hard time against a team that just snuck in and they make it past round this first round, they're going to have like a hard time in the second round because it's either going to be the Leafs or the Lightning that's going to take it. Uh, that's going to jump into the first uh, second round with them too. And it, you just you got to wonder, like, if they can't, fucking make it past the Florida Panthers what makes you think they can make it past the Toronto Maple Leafs or uh or even more or even more so a Tampa Bay Lightning team you know so. I feel like the only benefit to that is this series looks like it's gonna go six or it's obviously going six might go seven we'll know by the end of this uh weekend we're obviously recording on Friday night and you guys will get this on Monday but that series going long too is a benefit those two teams have battled it out more than any series in my oh, yeah. opinion yep. they're gonna be battle worn and tired as well mm-hmm. um and you know what I, I think the only team that really scares me out of Panthers, Lightning, and Leafs is the Leafs, and it seems like we've always had their number, so yep. I'm not all that concerned with the next round. I'm really just concerned about this Game 7 for sure. Yep, no, no I'm, I'm definitely with you on that. But, um, yeah, something's – oh, we talked about this before, uh, before we even started recording, and goalies this, in this playoffs are not solidified. We were going to talk about Akira Schmid later on with the New Jersey Devils, how they just threw him in there. Like, there's a starting goalie, and then just kind of just be like, you're not getting the job done, I'm going to throw you in. Does Jeremy Swayman start Game 7? That is going to be the hardest question for the coach to answer, uh, Jim Montgomery going to this. I really think that Omar should have been pulled after that fifth goal. As weird as it is, like, it's tough because, yes, the game is still tied and it's still a close game, and you really don't want to make a big change like that, but... Mm-hmm. The goals that he let up were, in my opinion, pretty soft. Yeah. Um, I think he had a good look at a lot of them and just kind of not necessarily got out of the way but flopped around a lot, And especially in Game 5. Like, I almost would have put Swayman in for Game 6. Like, what's the worst-case scenario? You lose and go to Game 7? Well, it looks yeah. like we're still doing that anyways, you know? Mm-hmm. Take the chance, and then guess what? If Swayman doesn't work out in 6, you go back to Allmark in 7. And if he worked in 6, you're on to the next round, you know? Right, right. I think Swayman tonight would have been a really well, nice answer. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you on that. You could almost say the same thing about the Bobrovsky situation. Like, they – I don't know. Like, that was weird. Alex Lyon was doing a hell of a job with the Florida Panthers, and then all, he just had a random rough night, and they threw Bobrovsky in there. But Bobrovsky isn't doing really well besides tonight. I would compare Bobrovsky and Allmark tonight both playing, like, not as good, especially with the, as high as the score as it was, 7-5, to five, right? It's just like, holy shit, Bobrovsky was letting up like just a, just a good amount of bad <laughs> goals as Allmark did uh, this uh, tonight. So, I don't know. But Florida Panthers, you know they're going to be putting Bobrovsky in that game seven. He's their guy. He's that $10 million guy. The bigger question is, what are the Bruins going to do game seven? And I kind of want to see Jeremy Swayman get that start in game seven. Yeah, I kind of do too, but I don't know if you change the mojo again. I feel like at this point you've solidified your your stance as Omar being your guy. guy. So like, yep. for them to go to him in Game Seven would be kind of weird. You know what I mean? Right. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it, it, that's like the mind pretzel that a tandem goaltending situation does to a goalie uh, to a coach in the playoffs. Right. Right. So I'm gonna uh, and edit for Sunday. I'm gonna I'll put down what actually happened for the screen for all of our YouTube watches and uh, for all our uh, Spotify Apple listeners. Uh, by the time you hear this, you'll know you know what happened. But uh, let's move on here to the Rangers versus the Devils here, which I was just talking about, Kara Schmid. Uh, Devils coming back. Absolute fucking comeback from the Devils here, which I love to see. They were down 0-2 in the series, and then Vitek Vanacek wasn't getting the job done. They threw this guy called Kara Schmid in net, and he had just shut the fucking door for New Jersey Devils. Um, what do I have on here? Kara Schmid, the last game he played was a 4 nothing shutout. He only, only two goals allowed <laughs> in, the, in the three games he's played on 82 combined shots face. This dude just was thrown in and was like, I'm a fucking brick wall. And he has given, given New Jersey Devils like the, uh, the space they need and the um, motivation they need to fucking score some goals on. Igor Shosturkin, who I want to talk about uh, right after this, where – uh, Shesterkin, we there's a after one of the saves he had, he went straight up to the bench, 
There's a little clip on that of him giving like his own teammates shit. But I thought I saw something of uh, kind of going on a tandem here. But to explain, I'm going to stay on Shesterkin here. Shesterkin, I thought I saw he's, that it was like a, about 10 or 10 two-on-ones in that game. And I Shesterkin's one of the best goalies in the league, just without, without having to say. But in the playoffs, and you fucking allow all those two-on-ones on him, as we've seen... It, it, like, you can watch the highlights, and there's a bunch of two ones with, like, he had, like, highlight saves, but then there was also, like, a few goals I think he let up with those two on ones. You can't fucking allow that in the playoffs. Your defense needs to be so much goddamn better for Shesterkin. I can't blame these games on Shesterkin, especially the especially that 4 0 game. You can't score on a, on a Kira Schmidt and you let up all those two on ones on your goalish Igor Shesterkin. He played on his fucking head. I do not, ta- I do not blame the game on uh, Igor Shesterkin here. I honestly believe the New York Rangers need to pull their heads out of their asses and really get fucking after it in the, in the next game tomorrow night, Saturday. But um, I don't know. As a Kara Schmid, I see. I feel like he's gonna be so relaxed that they're just he's gonna help push the Devils um, right into the round two here. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I think Akira Schmid. I don't know when they changed his name from Schmid to Schmid, but it's really pissing me off because we've been calling him Schmid all season long. Um, <laughs> I think, like, at the end of the day, a 22-year-old rookie coming in, it's it's kind of nuts to see that the the entire fate of this, you know, I would say one of the, the best teams in the league, New Jersey Devils, is resting on his shoulders. And like you said, he looks pretty calm, cool, collected. Yeah. One goal against Game 4, one goal against Game 3. Mm-hmm. Um, after the start of Vanacek, Vanacek, right? Vanacek. Got lit up 5-1, 5-1, two games in a row. Um, I also don't think that Shesterkin going to the bench right there is the best move. Like, yes you are getting, like, odd man Watch. rushes. Yeah. But the two games before that, it was, you know, two goals scored on you, three goals scored on you. Like, at the end of the day, they've been limiting chances other other than tonight. Yeah. And I think it's something that can be settled, like, between periods in the locker room some other time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really think it worked either because it at that point in the game, it's now 3 nothing. The only way you're going to get back in the game is if your defense takes chances and pushes up and leaves more opportunities for the other team to have two-on-one breakouts, you know? Mm, right. Because you need to put the puck in the back of the net. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shesterkin only ends up with three goals against in this game because the fourth goal was an empty netter. Uh, I think he's playing fine. I hope this game doesn't rattle him, but I think if I'm a Rangers fan, I'm very worried about him going over the bench tonight. Very like, fucking He's probably pissed off. If you ask me if the Devils can get up two or three nothing at the beginning of this game, this next game six, yeah, like they get two quick ones on him, I think he's gonna be out. He's yeah. gonna be all done. He's gonna be pissed off and oh, yeah. rattled. Mm-hmm. That's just my my take on it. But it's a good take. It's a uh, it def this this series actually didn't really do what I thought it was gonna do. I thought it was gonna ignite like another Rangers Devils uh, rivalry here, but it really didn't. To be honest, like there wasn't too much going on besides like kind of tight games besides the last game and uh just a lot more like offensive type of uh just plays i i think they're not as gritty and heavy either of these teams yes the rangers have truba uh but they moved on from ryan reeves midseason. Mm-hmm. the devils don't really have that like heavy hard hitting like you know beat your face in guy yeah, right. um so i don't think you're gonna really get too much of that when it's too young skilled offensive teams that are kind of all learning their roles at the same time, mm-hmm, even right. on the back end of the Rangers with Fox and uh, Keandre Miller. Right. Um, just just a lot of young faces. Same thing, Luke Hughes on the Devils. So. Yeah. Um, just trying, yeah. Just, I think a lot of guys trying to blend in and play hockey. Yeah, just like strict playoff hockey, you know. But we, we, we've we come across like a bunch of fights. That Bruins, uh, Bluins, yeah, what am I trying to say? The Bruins, Panthers series. Uh, especially at the end of this game, there was like a whole line brawl fucking right in the corner. No fights, though. No fights, though. scrums. A lot, of, a lot of scrums and... Face washing. Face washing. And Matthew Kachuk, some are in the, some are, some are in the midst of all that. So, um, I don't know. It's not much. Again, I'll, I'll put up uh, I'll put up on the screen here what, what happens over the weekend and what uh, the Devils and Rangers do. Uh, but I honestly believe the Devils... Are uh, right now because they're up three to two in the series. I think the Devils are going to take it and go round two here, and that is going to be a interesting series because the Hurricanes just beat the New York Islanders tonight, which sent them right to round two here for a four two uh, series win over the Islanders. So if the Devils take it, it'll be the Devils versus the Hurricanes, and that is going to be a interesting series because. 
I think the Hurricanes might fucking blow right by the Devils, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the Islanders play a much different game than either of these two teams. Like, the matchup for New Jersey and New York are very similar. Like, I think those two teams play a similar style. Mm -hmm. And I think the Islanders just really clog up the neutral zone and, like, slow the game down a lot. Yeah. Um, I think it doesn't really seem to work in the playoffs, as you can see from the New York Islanders playoff history lately. Mm -hmm. um, but now the Hurricanes waiting for these guys. It's good for them to get a little rest in. Uh, and I think no matter who they get, I think the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be on to the next round. Just I, I don't see – like what factor is going to put New Jersey or the Rangers over the yeah, Hurricanes, right. you know? New Jersey is a very young talent team. Carolina Hurricanes has that big body veteran sla and slash young team too that can fucking push through. And again, we've 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 said this throughout this entire fucking season. We're just like, I feel like we just don't talk about the Carolina Hurricanes and how good they are. They they really did just slide under the fucking radar. I just, think they've turned into like a Tampa Bay in a way where they just yeah. get into the playoffs and and start their season then. Mm. And Rod Brindamore behind the fucking bench is just un unbelievable. I think the big question mark for the Hurricanes is going to be goaltending and health there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there out, I think they're pretty well rounded offensively, well rounded defensively. Right. Svechnikov still being out is definitely tough. Um, but I, I do think that they have the upper hand in those either of those matchups. Yeah. So Antti Ranta definitely, uh, definitely helped out get them through. Uh, this this game six here with the uh, with the Islanders. Freddie Anderson finally came back, and uh, so Freddie Anderson thought I had something on here. One goal allowed on thirty four shots. Uh, so uh, it'll be nice nice little game to get in. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but you know, just like a kind of a big game actually to step in on. Like you you're coming back from injury and just like hey, this is like. Not do or die, but I'm like, hey, we can fucking take the series tonight. And here he is, just what only one goal allowed here. So it'll be cool to see if uh, for some reason this game really just helps him bounce right back into it. Yeah. So, but that's gonna be <clears throat> as you said that. I wonder if that's gonna. I, I, as you just you just said something that just hit my mind, because we we're just talking about goaltending. Like, what if round two Freddie Anderson goes in first the first game, kind of shits the bed, and now we're back at it. Now we're back with Auntie Ranta, you know. I feel like where um, the Hurricanes have home ice, regardless of who wins, I think they're going to give their starting goalie uh, Anderson, if he's back and healthy, both games, and then look, evaluate from there. Because once you're in an away barn now, like you can switch it up and drop a game there with your backup, and then switch back to your starter if you need to. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, right. I think it's got to be a two game test for. Anderson, if he's back in, mm -hmm. no, no, yeah. I feel like you can't look at changing goaltending if both guys are healthy, right? Until two games, mm -hmm. right, into a series. That's what I think, at least. Yeah. So before I get into like the last series of the East, I want to talk about the Islanders for a second here. They only won two games in this fucking whole series. They went from a team that was incredible. Was it during COVID, right? Made it to the semifinals, and I, my, I can't. Um, this is off, off. Sounds hand. right. It sounds right. Uh, I don't know what happened to them. They kind of just like fell off pretty quick after that, and but they're holding off like dear life. But at the same time, they're still not the same team they were. <clears throat> I don't know. I kind of think they are, and I think they're just playing a system rather than playing to their strengths. Um, I mean, let's look at the games by the series, right? Game one, two to one Hurricanes, so it's a one goal game. Mm. Game two, four to three Hurricanes, another one goal game. game. Uh, five to one win for the Islanders. Then we have um, five to two loss for the Islanders, and the last game was a two, uh, three to two. Sorry, game five, three to two lo uh, win for the Islanders, another one goal game. Hmm. And then this last game was two to one in overtime for Carolina to win. Interesting. So I mean, they they hung yeah, in there with one of the best teams in the East. I I think that. They don't get credit because of the system that they play. They're kind of like the Ottawa Senators of the past yeah. when they used to play that slow trap game through mm -hmm. the neutral zone. Um, but it, it works in a way. Like you hang in there and you play your game, but you're not taking enough offensive chances and risking enough defense on the back end to, you know, get yourself over the hump and really take control of a game. Right, right. No, you're definitely right. And before we wrap up that series too, um, I have the Carolina Hurricanes winning the series in four games. They won in six, but Matt will have to do 30 push-ups because the series went six games. Oh, shit. That's a uh... – okay, that was, that was the other thing I was going to bring up because I don't have the uh, – I don't have our, our – uh, pu I don't have that push-up thing. With I got you, buddy. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, uh, all right. So the last last series of the East is the big series in the East, which is the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Here, as of right now, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs are up three to two, which is fucking wild to me. Uh, a little comeback ish for uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs here. They they're surprising the shit out of me right now. I don't know if if it's just me or if it's you too, but I feel like Toronto, I feel like Tampa Bay should have had this more in their hands than they do. Well, I wouldn't say Toronto is surprising me. I'd say Andre Vasilevsky is surprising me. He has not been himself lately. I think he's got an 850 save percentage, and I think he has over 4.5 goals against uh, through these first five games. Um, Just crazy to see. Very unlike him. They did get the win in Game Five, uh, four to two, um, Thursday night, and they'll play again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, t- technically Saturday, seven p.m. for you listeners. Mm-hmm. I-, I don't know. I think it's just Andre Vasilevsky collapsing there. Just, um, just the Lightning came butt. into the playoffs a little bit battered and bruised. Mm-hmm. Um, the Maple Leafs were obviously fully healthy, but goaltending question mark. Yep. Sam Sonov has stepped up in a pretty big way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's uh, that's where I stand on it. So game six will be Saturday, and uh, again the Toronto Maple Leafs could fucking finish it off, which would be huge for the Ma- uh, which would be huge for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs uh, to make it to round two here. Uh, they have the fucking they Toronto Maple Leafs has the fucking team. You like you watch these plays, you watch like the players on the ice with the Toronto Maple Leafs versus this uh, Lightning team. You're just like. Jesus Christ, like, these guys are still doing well. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, like, they, they have a great fucking team uh, in this playoffs. The but... fact that bunting was a scratch in Game 5 was kind of nuts to me. I didn't expect that Yeah, no. coming off of the suspension and mm-hmm. then coach scratches him. Right. But yeah. I think someone, uh, Nyes, came in and filled that role pretty nice Again, for him. Yeah, that's a hell, a hell of a uh, call off there, too. Matthew Nyes, uh, Fuck, that call-up has been unbelievable for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Holy shit. And I think that's part of why Bunting isn't getting back in because the, the roster is working the way it's set right now. Mm-hmm. If something happens where they see this guy needs to come out or someone gets injured, that's when Bunting can come back in. Yep, yep. But as for now, Matthew Nyes has been really, really good with the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, another guy to just like look out for. Just a rookie that really came in. There's been a few rookies uh, this playoff series that have come in and really helped out. Uh, Seattle Kraken had one. Um, fuck, I just I thought I wrote his name down, but I didn't. There's there's another rookie that's been doing really well. It'll hit, it'll probably hit me later on, but um, I don't know. There's not much else to talk about besides with this Leafs Lightning situation. Besides, I, again, I want to go down the goaltending route with Ilya Samsonov here. Like, say, say the Toronto Maple Leafs go to round two here with Ilya Samsonov versus. I don't know the Panthers or Bruins. Can he get the job done? Uh, that's like that's, the... that's where I think it becomes an issue. But I don't think this is a team that's looking at. Is it Joseph Wall backing him up right now? I don't think this is a team that's looking at him and saying, "Hey, hey. Samsonov sucked game one. You're in." You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Even through two games, I think they're like, "We got to go with Samsonov." Yeah, right. I don't know. I think they shouldn't fuck with it all that much and just you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, everyone's fired and we're moving on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's just what this organization is thinking this season. Yeah. And I think it also means a lot of big trades in the off season for t- uh, Toronto. For Toronto. Yeah. If that happens. If it happens. But I think if they get out of this round and into the second round, everyone feels a little bit better. Um, and I mean, they'll be looking at either the Bruins, the Panthers, or, um, yeah, that's it, right? The Bruins, the Panthers. Bruins, so the Panthers, yep. I don't know. Um, so with. What, what am I trying to say? So the Lightning here, say they got bumped out this first round. We we've been talking about them being like a, uh, being just a playoff ready fucking team this entire this entire <laughs> season. This entire season they've not been the best team in the league, but they've been what they've been holding on a fourth, third. That's exactly what leagues. everyone looks at and says, "Oh, that's okay. That's just Tampa. As it's long just, as they punch their ticket, they step up when right. the time comes." But but with with that, and then you have the first round exit here. If they have Potential. a first round exit, yeah. does Tampa Bay make changes come this off season, or are they just? I don't think so. I do think that it makes them look at their team differently, and I think mostly it makes them look at Vasilevsky under a spotlight and say. Listen, dude, you told me not to pull you, and that got us fucked. Like, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't start our backup over you because you said you got it, and you didn't, you didn't have, have it. it. So 
this isn't going to fly like that anymore. Mm -hmm. I understand that you need to do X, Y, and Z for your shit to work, but yep. it didn't work, and we're going to have to change some things. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, 100%. I think he's everyone, for the most part, is still there in Tampa. I think they need a little more depth scoring from their bottom six, yep. um, but I don't think that it's going to be the same structure that, that they've been used to. Yep. It's also, think about the um, the stress that it's put on their body, right? Like, oh, yeah. how many, how deep every single year has been for like the past five fucking years. Yeah. Like right. they go, they go deep every playoff run. So um, they're just playing like basically at this point, it's probably been an extra season of hockey yeah. over their past like history. You know, they've probably played almost 82 games of playoffs yeah. games in the past five years. No, you're right. No, you're right. Cause there's, um, it was when they lost to the Colorado avalanche last year. I remember uh, Vasilevsky leaving, uh, leaving the ice, just rip shit. But then uh, in the post, Post game interview, he was just like you get like he was talking about the entire team, not just him, but there's an entire team is dealing with a bunch of fucking injuries. I mean, it happens to every team, but I think it would hurt so more the Tampa Bay Lightning for again exactly what you just said, a team that just goes deep into the playoffs, presumably every fucking post, yeah. uh, every every playoffs for the past what four or five years now. So definitely big toll on their body and. I don't know. Some of, there's a lot of guys there, like Pat Maroon, uh, Vasilevsky, uh, Cernak, Sergachev, that you know have done it. It's just like constant, constant hockey that could fucking put a hurt on your body. And I wonder if uh, they're kind of going through the same thing here. But, not, not to jump around a little bit, but you mentioned the Colorado Avalanche right now. They're up three to one with ten minutes left in the third against Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, that has potential to go seven games now. And imagine a world where the defending cup champion Colorado Avalanche are out in the first round, and so are the uh, three-time Tampa Bay Lightning right. gone in the first round. That'd right. be nuts, right? That'd be crazy. Yeah. yeah. Busting a lot of brackets, I bet, Some, with that. Something new. Especially with teams that just aren't in the playoffs. Washington Capitals, Pittsburgh Penguins, just like a whole new kind of bracket here for the playoffs here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Uh, but what, like exactly what you just said, let's jump into the West here, and we'll start with the uh, Minnesota Wild versus the Dallas Stars. Uh, currently, Dallas Stars are up three to two. They could take the series tonight. They did take the series tonight they... in a four to one win. Game hey, six is ended. Look at that. Uh, so that's so a Dallas six game are... series, which you got on the money, and that is thirty push ups for me. Get fucked, bud. Me and you will both be gonna get both gonna be doing thirty push ups. Tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, but with that said, uh, so the Dallas Stars move up, and it'll be whoever whoever wins this series, the Colorado Avalanche versus the Kraken, who are actually playing tonight, too. So if we can get that by the time. Uh, Is that who they're up against, whoever wins Colorado, Seattle? Yeah. Yep, so that'll be solidified. Uh, Seattle Kraken are currently up 3-2 to two in that series. So if Seattle Kraken win tonight, then it'll be Seattle Kraken versus the Dallas Stars, which would be one fucking hell of a matchup. But this Wild Stars matchup was actually pretty good too. Uh, Stars, not much. I don't. I don't want to say not much to say. It's just like the same thing. Jake Ottinger is really fucking. He's been showing himself for the past since he even came over from BU. I talked about Jake Ottinger before. I did want to do a appreciation post for him or something like that, where I talk about like these. Uh, these Hockey East goalies who just come straight from, like, Northeastern University, BU, and they're just NHL-ready. Like, just, these goalies, like, just skip. F like, if you're in B Boston College, Northeastern University, <coughs> B Boston University, like, you really just skip, like, everything. Like, ECHL, AHL, you're just like, no, nope, you you're fucking NHL-ready. And, it's like, that's a Demko. Um, I think part of the benefit is that Jake too Ottinger. is the the Canadian leagues, um, the seasons aren't timed the same way that the college leagues are. Yeah. So that like with a couple games left in the NHL season, some of these college guys when they find out they're not making the postseason can go straight from their team and be in the the lineup. lineup. And then the guys that are in a college lineup that go to the playoffs, when their playoffs are done, they can still even come in and play some playoff time with yeah. these guys. So nice. it's kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, this Dallas and Minnesota series, pretty nuts. Um, I think this Dallas team looks so good um, because they have their young guys that are growing and developing. Mm -hmm. They didn't really have to rebuild because there was one draft where they got Ottinger, Heiskanen, and Robertson all in fucking, like, two rounds, I think. Yeah. Um, so that definitely 
you know, lifted the team at times when the fucking owner was yelling at Jamie Benn and fucking Tyler Sagan to <laughs> yeah. the media, yep. which is wild to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think they've gotten some depth scoring too. Jamie Benn's been huge. Uh, Rupe Hintz got a nice game winner, oh, I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mason Marchment, who I think people tend to forget about, he's been really good for them as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I do like this Dallas Stars team a lot. Jason Robinson. It sucks to see one of my uh, future's pet bets be burned. <laughs> uh, my Minnesota Wild are now gone, gone. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. But uh, I think the better team won here. I do like Dallas a lot. I think they're just more well-rounded and, and ready and primed for the playoffs right now. Yep. I thought Minnesota Wild were there. <clears throat> they did have guys like Matt Boldy, Ryan Matt Reeves. Matt Boldy looks sick. Yeah. Both both those big uh, big dudes there getting getting ready to fucking fight. In the Missing playoffs. Erickson Eck was, was probably was the big. fucking straw that broke the camel's back. Erickson Eck was so good for them this year. It was nuts. I had him on my fantasy team. He was always putting the puck in. So yeah, uh, yep. Kaprizov being kind of spotty. Like, he was back, but he was still kind of like, you could see that he was a little timid and tender on his legs, you know? Yep. Um, I, I, I'm not really against the Wild here. I do do think they're just a great team. Maybe missing a few pieces here. Philip Gustafson played uh, really well for them. Um, they Dude, had a- another fir- that sucks a first round exit for the Wild again. I feel terrible for the state of hockey, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those diehard fans out there that just fucking suffer through it every year. Right. It's if the Toronto Maple Leafs weren't, you know, the highlight of losing in the first round. Yeah. I think the Wild or the Winnipeg Jets would be not yeah. just losing in the first round, but just like getting to the playoffs and losing every year. You know. Well, it's like that way for the uh, San Jose Sharks for a while. I remember the yeah. San- back I m- in, like- remember the choke. The, uh, yeah, they, they would say that they choked on like the piece of the stick that's in their logo in the shark's mouth. <laughs> it's fucking choked. funny, dude. I still love. Uh, uh, what does the shark say? Choke, 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 choke. Oh, choke. nice. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't around like two thousand seven, eight, nine, like that. It would be like the San Jose Sharks would be like the best team in the West, like number one just overall throughout the entire West throughout the entire regular season, and then first round just gets bumped. Like it was just like it was just their fucking standard, just, yeah, just a thing that they did. It was like what the fuck, you know? But now they're just a team that just you know just couldn't get over that first round. Now they're where they are. So, uh, but I still think the Wild have like a bright future with them. I think they're just missing a few key pieces. Um, I yeah, I, I feel like we, we've been over this, too, with, with all the teams in the league. Like, every team has, like, some young pieces that they're going to be able to build around. Yeah. And this is another one of those teams where, like, it's just too early for them. You need to give them some time, you yeah, know? Right. I think they need a couple more pieces around Kaprizov that can, you know, capitalize offensively. I forget what the stat was, but he contributed, like, a call it 65% of, like, all the goals that the Wild scored this season. Whoa, holy Something shit. like that. I fucking forget what it was. I probably butchered that. But um, he it was probably he had a part— in 65% of the goals that they scored. That's but, wild. Yeah, fucking nuts. Like, that you you need some more depth there. Yeah. But, so, with that said, congratulations to the Dallas Stars here. Uh, definitely going to be facing either the Colorado Avalanche or the Kraken. And, uh, again, during edit for everyone on YouTube, I'll put down, uh, put in the edit who they actually face. Uh, but let's move on to uh, your guys here. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights versus the Winnipeg Jets in a crazy fucking 4-1 series takeover by the Vegas Golden Knights. I thought the Winnipeg Jets would have some fucking fight in them, but the fact that they only won one game in this series, I was like, woof. Yeah, kind of nuts to see. I thought that it was going to be a bit more of a battle. Hellebuck didn't really have much to say to the Golden Knights, nope. I don't think. 4-1 um, to one game tonight. Or sorry, last night mm-hmm. I forget. Uh, three to one game. Let's see. Just digging back through the scores here. Five to four double overtime. That one was wild. Five to two in regulation, and the Jets actually won the first game of the series five to one, wow. and then lost four straight. Yep. Um, so that's kind of crazy. A little unexpected to see the goaltending choices by the Vegas Golden Knights. I think a lot of people thought that Jonathan Quick would have been their guy going yeah. into it. Um, but other than that. I don't know, okay, okay. My voice is running out. No, you're, you're I got no fine. gas in the tank. <laughs> you're doing good. Your Vegas Golden Knights are doing <laughs> fucking great, 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 great. Another another playoff team. Another playoff hockey team. Like, literally coming out of the fucking gates just, like, uh, during their uh, initial year. Man, these guys are just fucking ready to go. I think they're hungry for it. I think they want to get a cup under their belt. But I think this year I could see them getting to the conference finals. Uh, I don't know if I see them getting to the Stanley Cup. No. I think the West is very strong. Oh, yeah. You mean the East? No, the West. 
Oh, the Western. I, I see them getting to the okay. Western oh, Conference, yeah. but not to the Stanley gotcha. Cup. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I see what you're saying now. Um, but I want to talk about Rick Bonus here for the Winnipeg Jets coach. He was not fucking having it after that game. Like, I understand him being pissed off, but that post-game interview, he sat down, and you could just tell right away he didn't want to talk. There were, like, three questions asked, and, like, uh, usually the interviewers are, like, good with just, like, kind of jabbing at, like, coaches yeah. and players, and they're just like, eh, we'll let, you, we'll let you go, and he just got up. Honestly, too, remember the beginning of the season? There were so many questions about the Jets' locker room, who's the cancer in it, what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, Bufflin just stopped playing. Shifley, like, doesn't want to be there. I think there was another one that was going around when they stripped the captaincy off of whoever it was. I forget who now, but just just weird times, and, like, you couldn't really figure them out. They barely snuck into the playoffs. Like, if you think about it, this was kind of, like, the most expected outcome, I think. Yeah. Um, but we just, like, I think we both picked based on the Winnipeg Jets playoff history yeah. in the past, and we knew that they were, like, they have that dog in them. Like, they get in there and they fucking grind it out. They'll, it. they'll crunch you into the boards. The whiteout gives them a very big home home ice advantage. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this season they just didn't have it in them, I guess. It was just wild to me because I, I just – I put my ties with uh, – with uh, Connor Hellebuck there, I was like, no, he's a he's a fucking dog that can get. I through. mean, yeah, Vesna candidate still this year. I want to say it's yeah. probably him, Sorokin, and Omar. And I think Omar's going to be the runaway guy for it. But... Uh, easily, yep. But it's just like, why? What the fuck was going on with this series? I thought they, again, I thought they would have put more of a fight. Yeah. Just. Ah, fuck, now I want to go back. It's... But we got Vegas in five, so you can add fucking eight miles on the treadmill to your thirty push-ups. <laughs> that. Fuck that sucks so bad. Eight miles. That's that's. I don't. I don't want to talk about that. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at like the the Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg Jets. What the fuck am I trying to say? Roster. Roster here, yeah. Kyle Connor. I mean, one goal. Oh, that was just that one game. But I, I do like Kyle Connor, and there's a bunch of like names here, like uh, Ellers, Blake Wheeler, Appleton, Coolman, uh, Larry, uh, Nemesnikov. I mean, Pionk and DeMello, but... I, mean, I don't I don't think they're that deep, but you know? You, they really aren't. It's not great. They, they really fucking aren't. And it's funny because <clears throat> Nino Niederreiter is on the team, and it wasn't really to the playoffs when I was watching it. I was like, damn, I forgot you were on this fucking team. Like, Niederreiter, like... Yeah, they just weren't a team that you watched during the regular season, I no, feel like, it too. it just kind of just fucking fell off. Um, Dubois. But it's nice to have that guy that, like, slots into the roster in, like, your second or third line that is definitely a factor and a name, but Mm -hmm. that the other team doesn't really, like, quote-unquote respect in their eyes. Like, you don't give them the same time of day that you do to, like, a Shifley or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Yep. Yeah, I just, you don't need a ride ahead. So, two years ago, I was on Carolina, 24 goals, 20 assists. Last year with Nashville Predators, 18 goals, 10 assists. And then... This year with the Winnipeg Jets, only six goals and seven assists. That's in the terrible to see. That's a wow. fucking fall off right there. That's why I was just like, when I saw Nita, I'm like, the fuck, he's on this team. And then that's a, yeah, they gotta they gotta figure something out. That's uh, this will be an interesting uh, off season for the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, I think they gotta definitely make some fucking moves to really figure things out. And I, I honestly think it might be back office, as bad as that sounds. Yeah, I don't know. We, we've talked about the uh, the head coach is always being like a scapegoat here, and I don't want that for Rick Bonus, but he just got in there in the middle of the season, actually. I forgot yeah. about that. Yep. So I kind of hope he stays and they just kind of figure out what the fuck they're going to do with the players. Uh, obviously, this, this, is, this is one team that I think needs, like, Another couple young guys to get up and running yeah. quickly, you know. Yep, yep, one one thousand fucking percent. So interesting off season for the Winnipeg Jets. I would say just definitely hope for it or look for it. Just draft and develop here. Goes. Yep, exactly. Uh, let's move on here to the Edmonton Oilers and the L.A. Kings. The L.A. <laughs> Kings are holding off, uh, but the Edmonton Oilers are currently up three two in the series. They could win tomorrow night. And uh, go on and face Vegas. The whole thing about this series that I think is crazy, the last time this team played was Tuesday, April 25th. They're not playing again until uh, Saturday, April 29th, because the Staples Center, uh, Game 6 is going to be there, Edmonton at L.A. Mm -hmm. It's being split between them, the L.A. Lakers, and the L.A. Clippers because those two basketball teams are in the playoffs right now. So they have three teams that are using one facility. Oh, I think shit. in 48 hours, they had to go from um, Lakers Parquet to the Kings home ice to 
uh, Clippers parquet. Damn. Right? And, like, the crew was just fucking exhausted at the end of it. The crew that changes over the ice. That's a lot of fucking yeah. work. Yeah, that's nuts. So, yeah, a lot of time off, a lot of rest for these guys. I think that's bad for L.A. I think Edmonton is going to come in fresh, rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. They won that last game to give them a 3-2 series lead. I could totally see them closing out in L.A. Yep. I kind of wanted the Kings to just come out of fucking left field and take take the Oilers. In this. I do, li yeah, I do like their uh, their lineup. I think they're gritty, they're young. It'd be cool to see them go on to the next round, but yeah. I can't see them going much further than the second. So I, I do want to see the better team win here that, and have Edmonton move on. That really is just the unfortunate part with the LA Kings here. Uh, again, like I think the LA Kings are a great, great fucking team, but they're just heading up against a absolute unit of a team like the Edmonton Oilers here, but. You know they, the LA Kings have such like a bright future ahead of them. When it if they if they don't fucking pull us off and they'll be swinging the golf clubs later on. But man, they have they it's just a solid fucking team they got going on. Corpusalo and Phoenix Copley when uh have been fucking great. That move for uh Jonathan Quick for the um uh to move Jonathan Quick out of there has. I think it's actually helped the who, who, Yeah, who would have thought LA that that would have worked out for them? Yeah. Nuts. Nuts. And uh, the whole Corp Corpusal has been really fucking good. I, well, I want to say really fucking good, but he's, he's been good. And Phoenix Copley has been a solid backup for him. I think uh, let it let it let the offseason go. Let both um, Corpusal and Copley figure out the team and practice together. And I think you're going to see a, uh, a better a better Corpusal. I think it's crazy that you don't think Corpusal has been really fucking good for the Kings. I think he's been incredible. Coming into a new team and, in and putting in the, the numbers that he had leading into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I just uh, – you, you look at, like, the fucking names there, like Doughty, Kempe, Kopitar, Trevor Moore, Velarde, Ayafalo, Fiala, Afiala, Dano, Walker. I mean, they, they just have the fucking names. They just have the players. Quentin Byfield is really showing his shit. Uh, Gavrikov. I mean, the list just fucking goes on with this L.A. Kings team. So it's literally, literally in a matter of, like, next season or the season after where they just find that one last missing piece and you're going to see this team fucking flourish in uh, the regular season and or the uh, playoffs. So Corpus Allo, after getting traded to the Kings, 7-3-1 with a 9-2-1 save percentage and a 2.13 goals against. Wow. Damn. Playoffs definitely aren't going to look as good because he's playing against the fucking uh, the fucking Edmonton Edmonton Oilers. Oilers. Yeah, get fucking roofed. But, yeah, a three point four nine and a nine oh four. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, you you playing against the oh, you playing against the, the uh, insane Oilers front to Leon Drysaddle, uh, Connor McDavid. Yeah, I mean, and Nugent Hopkins has been red hot for them as well. Mm -hmm. I did talk about last week. I did talk about the Connor McDavid and uh, how he kind of has been producing, but. Uh, I don't think you said it to me after we recorded or before, but I never brought it up. Uh, the LA Kings were like two manning Connor McDavid. Like at no given at any given point, if Connor McDavid had the puck, there were like two kings just like on him where like he couldn't shoot, but he could make some passes. And he had he's got <coughs> I don't know if you get his hockey DB up, but he's got plenty of assists I think in this in this series too. So not only is it just like two guys on him throughout this entire series that he is still making passes, still making plays, and still getting the job done, which is kind of fucking wild to see. And uh, it's been – we got it up. <clears throat> but it's been – I don't know. It's just – he's one of those guys where you're just like you can't, you can't just give him the puck and just like see what's going to happen because it's just going to end up in the back of the net within a few seconds. Yeah, it's been <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Jesus Christ. It's been working <laughs> double-teaming him. Game three, he put two in the back of the net. But before that, they held him scoreless in the first game, one assist the next game. Yep. And then these last two games, two assists and three assists. So yeah. they're keeping him from putting the puck in the back of the net and making the Edmonton Oilers work differently to get their goals, yep. spread the puck around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think personally – it's good to double team him, but not in the sense of like having two guys directly on top of him. Yeah. What you want to do is box him out with one player and have the other guy ready to slide in right behind him so that when, when McDavid makes that move to get to the front of the net, mm -hmm. there's another guy picking him up right away. Right. You can't have two guys right on him there because if he makes one move to get by two guys like at one time, mm -hmm. that's a lot easier for him than it is to make a move around one guy and a move around the next guy. You know what I mean? Right. No. Um, you, you did right. Yep. And I think um, – Jesus Christ, I lost my train of thought there. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that it worked at the beginning, but, you know, 
he's got three points through the first three games, mm-hmm. and now he has five points in the last two games. Right. So he's starting to figure it out a little bit, how to move the puck around and how to work this LA Kings defense. Yeah, and yeah, yep, you nailed it. It doesn't take long for a guy like Connor McDavid either to figure shit out, you know. But um, I, uh, I, I, I still want the fucking Kings to get, take two, two games out of their ass, push a game seven, and take this series. Like I, I just, I would love to fucking see that. I don't think it's gonna happen now that we're talking about it. But well, they only need a one, one more to force a game seven. One more to force a game seven. That's what I'm saying. They need two games to win this series. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they need uh, uh, they need more Will Ferrell. Yeah, I don't know. Edmonton Anything. Edmonton packed a Will Ferrell too. Did you see that when oh. they went back to Edmonton? Uh, there was a fan there that had like blue and same orange thing. paint and like a white beard, and like he bought the exact same fucking beanie that <laughs> really? Will Ferrell was wearing. Yeah, it's so funny, dude. <laughs> That's fucking the checkerboard awesome. style. It was too cool. <laughs> That's fucking great. But, uh, yeah, uh, this will be another series where uh, I'll put everything down here for all YouTube listeners because by Sunday we'll have, when I'm editing this, uh, all of our all of our stuff will be in fruition. But this is going to be the last series we're going to talk about in the West here, and that is the Colorado Avalanche versus the Seattle Kraken. Um, this I've been pushing this fucking series since last week when we were ta- we started talking about the NHL playoffs. Oh, not even last week. I think it was the week before, too. I love, love this fucking series. It's uh, just a great back and forth just type of series. And I think both goaltending has been really fuck good. Offense, defense, and just like the Seattle Kraken crowd. <coughs> is, I, I, Seattle, not even hold on, Not even just that. Seattle Kraken crowd, color avalanche. Colorado Avalanche crowd, the announces everything about this series. I just fucking love. Anytime it's on, I'm like, nope, watching this shit. Seeing I- Seattle get playoff hockey after waiting all last season and mm-hmm. having a terrible year, and getting there this year and like kind of sneaking in a little bit, you know, like they weren't expected to make the playoffs at the beginning of this year. And Maddie Beneers has like single handedly lifted that organization. Oh, yeah. Um, but Morgan yeah. Geeky. To see them having this kind of year, it's great that Seattle can have playoff hockey and mm. the the crowd is loving it. It's amazing. the The fans are really fucking weird though, with all the tentacles and like cracking <laughs> shit that they bring out. Like, it's like kind of disgusting, honestly. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is that on that guy's head? It's like a 3D printed fucking snuffleupagus. I'm like, oh my god. Some guys are wearing like these crazy ass masks too. With the, yeah, like the Cthulhu like a legit, yeah, Cthulhu, Cthulhu, yeah, Cthulhu. no shit, destroyer I'm of like, worlds. What the fuck is going on? But you know, whatever, whatever gets uh, well, the all fans the fans. all the drugs are legal in uh, Washington <laughs> State, right? Or is it Oregon? I forget. There's one like <laughs> town where like anything goes. I wonder if I can put a photo up. Was it was it this? Uh, was it that? Oh, it was that same game. The fucking fan at the end of the first period. Oh yeah, dude, he was going nuts. He's like bugged his eyes out. Like, oh yeah. Look like me the other night of the Bruins game five, losing <laughs> my voice. But it's one of those is like at the end of a goal and the camera just like uh, zooms like in too, on a fan. Too, t- stayed on him a little too long yeah. than what they should have, and uh, it was and then fun. at intermission they brought him back. They too, brought him and, like back. put the same clip up. <laughs> it's fucking great. So they even, they even noticed it. But man, I I fucking love this series. Uh, Avs Kraken again. The uh, Kraken are up three two in this this series and can take it Sunday. Oh yeah. no, they can take it tonight. Right. Yeah, but it looks like this is going to be going to Game Seven. The Avalanche are up three to one with a minute left, so we'll have an answer for you guys shortly. We'll just continue our coverage here. Yeah. So, oh yeah, now I see it. So, games... Nico Rantanen has been fucking incredible for the Avalanche. Um, goaltending's yep. actually been pretty nice out of Philip Grubauer, I'd say, and Georgiev. Yep. Um, I think that the main issue here is Avalanche health. Um, it is, like I said, nuts to see the defending Stanley Cup champions potentially being bounced in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um. But I think they have the wherewithal, the grit, the Nathan McKinnon like mentality as a team to get over these adversities. So mm-hmm. I think even if it goes Game Seven, which it seems like it might, the Avalanche definitely still have a fighting chance in that oh, yeah. game. Oh yeah, one thousand percent. But yeah, like you said about Miko Ranton, and that, that that was like the one player I've noticed throughout this entire uh, playoff so far. I think you told me hundred points on the season. Is that right? Hundred and five points yeah. this season. Fifty five goals. Fifty to six. Uh, uh, 50 assists, sorry. And then last season in 75 games played at 36 goals and 56 assists. This guy's been fucking unbelievable. Unsung hero. I think he stepped up big when Kadri ended up moving on from the team uh, last season. Mm-hmm. So I think he kind of filled those shoes a little bit, even though they play a different role on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I think really it's just going to be about getting over some of these injuries and getting through, you know, some of the the bumps and bruises that they're going to have right. um, against this Kraken team. Right. No, you're definitely right. And yeah, and ranted in. I, I just want to throw him right back in there again. He is one of those weird players that somehow is in the right spot at the right fucking time. I feel Hockey like IQ, baby. Yeah, it's just it's just wild to see him. Like he just kind of just he'll be hanging out, or just like just either in front of the goalie, it's like to the left of the goalie, and then the the puck just comes to him, and he goes, "All right, let me just fucking tap it in real quick." But he's he's just been an unbelievable uh, player for the Colorado Avalanche here, and I can see I can see really this go uh, either way for Game Seven here. So it'll be a great, great, great Game Seven. Uh, Seattle Kraken. Um, we had a fucking crazy one today. You were talking about the asterisk. <clears throat> so tonight, the Colorado Avalanche scored first, but the uh, the goal got called back because of an offside, and then the Seattle Kraken scored uh, pretty soon after that, which means that for six games straight, the Seattle Kraken scored first uh, in every game. So that's fucking – that's a crazy stat right there. I know that the Seattle Kraken even away can fucking score first. So um, – uh, this guy, uh, just Seattle Kraken. They, they were just, home today, but yeah. They were home, yeah. yeah. But uh, Seattle Kraken just, like, in general, just really, really, really one fucking 80 from, like, last year. Oh, yeah. 180. And it's from fucking... seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, Grubauer got his game back, I think, was the big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just, like, the young guys stepping up. But, like, there was yeah. no real rhyme or reason to no. it, I don't think. Not at all. Like, that whole, the whole draft, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Expansion the, draft. Expansion draft with them. Like the whole time, I'm like what the fuck are they doing when when they're bringing in guys? I'm like, what? They were like bringing in guys and like trading them right back to the teams they took them from. I'm like, what the hell is going on? But scam, scammed, scammed. But it just it worked out. Here they are, and uh, they're doing really fucking well for themselves. So, but uh, that is our final two, four to one Avalanche over the Kraken. Um, oh, the Kraken seven. only get one. They have one goal that they scored first. This game was the only one. Uh, Avalanche, I believe, got an empty netter at the end here, forcing a game seven going back to Denver, Colorado, Mile High Club. Um, <laughs> let's see, game's gonna be tomorrow. Oh, sorry, Sunday. Sunday. Yep. So, we'll see. I might not have that up, but yeah, we'll see. But holy shit! So we got two game sevens this weekend. Three games. No, sorry, two game sevens confirmed. That reminds me. Um, where are the game seven? Oh, that's so. That's Sunday for the Boston Bruins. Yep, Sunday for the Bruins and Sunday for the Avalanche. Oh, that's good. Nice. Well, I know what the fuck I'm doing Sunday. Sunday's gonna be a busy day for me. Tomorrow we got. Oh, that kind of sucks. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m. Last weekend was kind of awesome. They scheduled the games out really nice. I want to say it was like. One, three, seven, and nine were like the start times. Mm-hmm. Um, the players I heard weren't too thrilled about it because maybe it was a three o'clock puck drop because the, the game would have started at 12 Western time. And the, I heard the players were like, dude, I only got to have fucking breakfast today. Like, I'm not going to eat lunch before I get on the ice. Damn. So, like, in games that go into overtime or double overtime, like, yeah. now it's fucking 4 30, 5 o'clock, and you haven't eaten since breakfast, you know? Jesus. So, it, it's kind of tough, but. I think the best thing in the world that they can do is try to get away from the NBA as much as possible with scheduling. Yeah. They never seem to care about that. I do think there's a little bit less of like an overlapping audience there. Mm-hmm. Um, but at at the same point, like why wouldn't you spread the games out as much as possible throughout the day? Because then you can get nine hours of viewership for like the nutsack hockey fan that wants to watch all three games mm-hmm. rather than flipping between the channels between, you know, an hour between each game, like seven, eight, and ten right. for today's schedule. Now, mm-hmm. so no. dead on. I thought I sent you to something as you were talking about um, arenas and shit. Oh, <laughs> there's another thing I want to bring up too. Uh, there's actually two things. I didn't even really go through a fucking Instagram, but there's one thing that I found interesting um, for everyone. So Phil Kessel was a healthy scratch this week with the uh, LA in Game Five. Um, it's, this is his first game he's missed since 2009, but this also doesn't affect his, uh, Iron Man streak, uh, cause it's only good for, the Iron Man streak only lasts, is only good, what am I trying to say, is only for a regular season. So, he missed the game for the first time since 2009, which is fucking wild to me, and, uh, but his Iron Man streak remains. But, uh, I feel like Phil's kind of been falling down a bit. Stat wise, he's been one of those guys that just like they keep 
throwing him in there. Am I uh, wrong? For I Las Vegas, was, right? For Las Vegas, yeah. yeah. he's he's um, 35 now. I mean, he's getting old. He's getting old. Played all 82 games this season, obviously. Yeah. Uh, only had 36 points this year, but I think it tied his career. No, he did have one year that was lower, but he did tie his second uh, worst career year, I think. Something like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that he kind of fits in in a weird spot in this Vegas organization compared to where he was in Arizona. Yeah. In Arizona, he was definitely the setup the guy. guy. Last season, eight goals, 44 assists. Like, Jesus Christ, pass the puck, you know? Right. Uh, minus 24 with that team, though. Um, it seems like his whole career, he's kind of – he's a minus 155 on his career. That's fucking nuts. Oof. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of stat crunching here, but – I thought I, I thought I uh, you good. I, I thought I sent something. There, there was talk about a uh, another team uh, making another arena. Or did you did, did did you remember me sending that? Fuck. I think I might just skip it. We'll talk about it next week. I meant to go through this shit and I just never did. Uh, yeah, but talking about arenas, there's an, there's another team that uh, I'll find and probably talk about next uh, next week. But uh, yeah, they're gonna build like a, another arena for them. I think it was, like, somewhere in Canada. I don't know. Fuck it. I'm in a dead air at this point. Uh, but the last thing I do want to talk about, because I want to get your opinion, because it has been a thing across the NHL and memes especially, is that uh, your boy uh, from Spittin' Chicklets, Whitney, talked about um, wearing jerseys and how adult men should not wear them. So what's your take on that? I think his main thing is, like, you're a grown-ass man. You're going to wear a jersey with another man's name on it. Like, that's kind of weird. And if you really get down to the core aspect of it, it's kind of fucking weird, right? But you're supporting the team. You're supporting a player that you're you You're supporting, like. like, one specific dude. You're a grown man. You're like, I love this guy. I want his name on my back. What's wrong with that? Like, I'm not talking about, like, hockey or sports or anything like that, just in general. Yeah. You're going to put another dude's name on, like, the, your, your back? Like, I don't know. You don't think that that's, like, you know, objectively speaking, kind of weird? No. Why is that not weird? Explain to me how it's normal to do that. Because you, you, that's that's you being a fan. That's you supporting a player. That's you saying like, "Hey, like I support you. I love you on this team. Like you're you're like one of my guys." That's kind of weird. Really? I get it if it's like a family member or someone you personally know, but for some random stranger that because he plays for your team, you're now gonna go out and buy a jersey for 150 dollars with his name on it and wear it around. Like that's kind of weird. When else do you wear a jersey other than going to a game? You don't. You know? Right? That's the yeah. only time you ever wear it. Because mm-hmm. it'd be fucking weird to walk around with another dude's name on your back <laughs> as a grown man. You know what I mean? I think his main point is that, like, it it should be for kids because kids kind of see that in a different light. But he's really getting to, like, the core aspect of it. I personally don't have a, an opinion on it, really. I don't care either way. Like, wear whatever you want to wear. Yeah. Um, but I don't, at the end of the day, think it's, it's like, weird to do it. Hmm. I think, like, the concept of it is weird. Is weird. You know what I mean? When you yeah. really break it down and look at it like that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I think it's fine. I mean, where, like, like I said, the counterpoint to my argument is where else are you going to wear the jersey? Nowhere. That's right. So I'm going to wear it to the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I just, yeah. Get a good point. But, like, I don't know. I, I didn't think is he it, needed it, to make it a big thing like he did. I don't He's think getting, so. like, fucking flamed online flamed. for it. It's so funny. It's so fuck. All the memes for it, too, have been so fucking good. But, um,. I, I, I want to see someone burning a like Ryan Whitney jersey. Like, fuck you, dude. You don't want me to wear your jersey. <laughs> I've had this since you were on the pens. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. Is it because the hockey jerseys stand out more? Like the baseball. If you wear like an MLB like Red Sox jersey, that doesn't really stand out. I, I think like, those stand out. I've like seen, a, I, a button down. Like it buttons unlike any other shirt. I've seen guys walk around downtown with like a fucking Red Sox David Ortiz thing, and it, I don't think anything of it but if you de- if you do see someone out and about like in boston just wearing a fucking bruins jersey you're like oh he's wearing a fucking jersey like that just i, I think it sticks out more than a regular fucking MLB i don't know jersey. i don't think it does i think every jersey kind of stands out especially a basketball one because it's a tank top yeah that too. i feel like you don't really see people in basketball jerseys like you do in the summertime on the beach or like when it's nice out but like that limits when you can wear them. And also, like, the NBA season is through the winter, so, like, you can't really wear the tank tops all the time, you know? Yeah. So that, that one's probably the toughest one. I mean, you see a bunch of Celtics ones all the time around here. Yeah. Over other things, though. Yeah. Like over right. a hoodie or some shit, I think. Right, bet. right, right, right. But, yeah, that was just funny as shit to me for, like, the entire week. It just, it happened. And I didn't know it happened until I started seeing the memes, and I'm like, all right, now i got to figure out the hell It made going me on. immediately think of, like, those sick fan caves that you see. 
of like this dude's basement's a man cave, but obviously it's sports themed and it's themed to like his specific team. Yeah. And he has literally like a walk in closet of like Matthews, Marner, fucking Bunting, yeah. like every jersey on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it makes me think of that and I'm like, that's a little overkill. <laughs> you don't you don't need your fourth fan. line bum jersey. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't gotta have every jersey. <laughs> Like a Hal Gill jersey, just kind of <laughs> a David around. Ayers a Carolina David Hurricanes Ayers. <laughs> jersey. That one, that one would be kind of cool though. Like I would respect that. Yeah, that that, that one's actually pretty cool. Or just like a, uh, I don't think of like some random ass fucking just. The know. Nick Ritchie Calgary Flames jersey from when he was in the <laughs> shootout in the eighty second game of the year with the playoff hopes on the line, <laughs> and he probably missed the net. I didn't even watch the highlight. <laughs> we do have. We wait a minute. We have a random ass jersey. It was a Scott. It was a John Scott Angel All Star. That's not dude. random, dude. John Scott is the highlight of the All Star games of all time. I see what you did, but yes. No, he. Is, I wasn't doing one of those things. Oh. He is one of the highlights of all of the All Star games of all time. Yeah, you're right. You had a good point. Yeah, he, don't you think? Like that's the coolest storyline in the history of the All Star. He game. is a fucking legend. Yeah, the, the entire fan base. Chumped the NHL league. The league said you can't vote this guy in. He's not eligible. The fans Took him like, off, and the fans you. rioted. He got back in, and they fucking lifted him on their shoulders after he fucking <laughs> scored a game-winning goal, dude. That is so sick. And he loved it. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. He was the center of attention that week, and it was too funny. <laughs> the good thing is that like the NHL kind of like leaned into it once, like they begrudgingly let it happen. But yeah. like they literally killed that guy's career that season because Montreal got him, and like. Got him in a trade to like try and use that as an excuse for him to not go to the All Star game, and then sent him to the minors and said like he literally can't go because he's in the AHL right now. And they were like, nope. Fans nope, said he's going. Nope, fuck you. Like, fuck you, Batman. You. With your fucking New Balances, <laughs> he's going. <laughs> Ship him. I don't give a fuck if he's playing in the coast. Ship Batman. Ship Batman this off season. <laughs> No, I think Batman's done a lot of good things. I think hockey in the desert needs to die, but oh, God. Uh, I, don't know I think he just needs to admit he's that. wrong when it happens. But oh, God. When your team's not paying their bills, it's kind of a tough look. Oh, it's it's been a tough look for a fucking while. Bring back the Nordiques. That's, that's, that's all I have to say. If Houston got a team, what would they be? Oh, Houston. Uh... Do they have a team called the Rampage? I have no I feel like that sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, Houston Astros? Is that's that a baseball that, That's baseball? Team. Yeah. I like the Houston. Um, that's a good question. I like the Texas Bulls. Texas is huge. I'm shocked they only have one team. I like the Bulls, but it'd be weird to do, like, Bulls. The Houston Bulls? Yeah. doesn't really flow. It doesn't really roll flow. off the tongue. I mean, if you're Bulls, it's got to be Chicago. Dallas Stars makes sense. That's, that's fucking pretty cool. Dallas, uh, the Houston Cowboys? No. Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws. That'd be sick. The Houston, the Houston, uh, I don't know, Texas. Think Texas. Houston Ranch. <laughs> the Hidden Valley Houston Ranch. <laughs> All right, that's dead. Well, yeah, that's fucking. That <coughs> we'll died, cross that, that bridge when we get ago. there. Yep, there we go. Maybe we'll go back to Atlanta before we go there. <laughs> we'll re- rethink this. Oh, God, please don't. Please <laughs> they fucking might. don't. They might. Don't, don't come back. Cheers, bud. Cheers, buddy. All right, before we sign off here, huge thank you to our sponsor, Corona Premier. Um, another episode where actually both of us really didn't have have one. But. This is the first time I think I haven't had one since we were sponsored. Uh, as you can tell, I'm in no mood to drink right now. <laughs> uh, my voice does not need a beer. I didn't need that nip, but we can't say no to the nips. No. I mean, that sounds terrible because they're a sponsor it's and a I should have had a beer, but yeah. um, it's just our tradition to close out with a nip, so I had to do yeah. that, and but I'm really regretting it right now. Don't worry. I'll be having a lot tomorrow night. Oh, boy. Tomorrow's my Friday. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ooh. All right, so let's call it up. So want me to do it? Sure. Oh, boy. All yours, Chief. I don't even know how to do it. All right. Again, thank you, Corona Premier, for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, if anyone has any questions or wants us to talk about anything, uh, there's a link in our description. Uh, or you can get me on Instagram, MadDogMatt44. Uh, DM me there. I'll, I'm on there more often than anything. Just add me and DM me there. And oh, Let's talk. Let's figure shit out. And uh, thank you all for listening, and we'll see you guys all on the next episode. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace.